These days, more and more folks, including myself, are enjoying bike packing with a full suspension mountain bike. For me, shred packing on chonky and technical and rugged backcountry single track is definitely more fun and efficient with the full sauce. Not to mention it's less fatiguing and harsh on your body. But along with the comfort and fun of a full suspension bike comes limited storage space in the main triangle, making loading stuff on the fork legs more appealing. And unlike rigid forks that offer brazons for mounting water bottle cages and anything cages, we've always had to be creative with mounting stuff to our prized suspension forks without damaging them or having our water bottles go flying out in the middle of a rowdy descent. I've tinkered with all types of MacGyver type rigging, but in my opinion, old school hose clamps with sauce and Nicholas bottle cages have always been the most reliable solution. Well, Tailfin came out with these nifty little SFMs or suspension fork mounts a while back in an effort to make a better solution and I've had the opportunity to put them through the ringer for well over a year on the gnarliest bikepacking routes out there. So in this video, I'm going to give you my long-term takeaway, all the pros and cons, how they've held up, and whether I think they're worth the investment over the cheaper hose clamp solutions. And by the way, if we haven't already met, I'm Alan, aka Dirty Teeth. Thanks for visiting my channel. If you're not familiar with Tailfin, they're a UK-based company that initially gained notoriety and traction in the bikepacking scene with their lightweight and well-designed rear racks. More recently, they've gone all in with a full line of bikepacking bags and storage solutions. They spend a bunch of time, energy, and money on R&D and have a slew of sponsored riders involved in development, testing in real-world bikepacking races while offering feedback before anything comes to market. Because of this, Tailfin is known for making premium products that withstand the rigors of bikepacking. So my expectations for all their offerings are pretty high. In addition to their SFMs, I've also been using and testing their down tube packs, cargo cages, and cage packs for a good long while. And spoiler alert, I haven't met a Tailfin product that I haven't liked. There's two options for the suspension fork mounts, carbon fiber or stainless steel. Other than material, the main differences are weight and price. The carbon fiber mounts weigh 82 grams for a set, while the steel version is 128 grams, and this includes all the hardware. The stainless steel retails for 40 bucks, while the carbon retails for 70. To be clear, by one set, I mean one pair of clamps, which will outfit one side of your fork. So if you wanna mount stuff on both fork legs, double everything I just said. The mount itself consists of three parts. There is an outer band or clamp, which is the backbone of the system, a bolt that threads into a barrel on the band, and a rubber spacer. The kit includes different sized bolts and rubber spacers to ensure correct fitment on a variety of fork leg diameters. This includes everything in the Fox 32 to 36 range and RockShox Sid, Pike, and Lyric, which is what most folks use for bikepacking. It also works with plenty of other forks with lower leg outer diameters between 36 and 45 millimeters, which equates to a 30 to 36 millimeter stanchion diameter. I'm personally using these mounts on my Fox 34 Stepcast fork. FYI, it's not compatible with bigger 38 or 40 series forks or smaller tapered forks like the RockShox Judy gravel fork. Tailfin lists a weight limit of three kilograms or a little over six and a half pounds on single track and five kilograms or 11 pounds for gravel. I'd personally err on the three kilogram side of things because I've never met gravel that doesn't morph into single track at some point. You know what I'm saying? Either way, I'd probably never come close to loading that much weight on my sus fork anyway, but glad to know it can handle it. Each SFM offers three mounting positions, four middle and aft. Uh, if you're using a single cage, you can use whichever you prefer. And if you're using a dual cage configuration, you use the four and the aft. The system is modular and it's designed in a way that pieces can be individually replaced if damaged or broken. There's a five year, no questions asked warranty and tail fin will ship replacement parts anywhere in the world. FYI, they're now shipping to US customers from a distribution center in Utah, so that's pretty cool. As I mentioned, Tailfin does extensive in-house testing, and if you want to geek out on all the data, I'll link to it in the description, but I won't bore you here with all the details. 
In a nutshell, they subjected the mounts to slippage, twisting, and stiffness tests and compared them with hose clamps and a few other competing products. They found the SFMs to be twice as stiff as the competitors and took more than twice the amount of force to slip. Of course, it's easy to argue that this isn't third party testing, but the fact that they're vigorously testing something as seemingly trivial as fork clamping devices in the first place is pretty impressive. Not to mention publishing their testing data and openly sharing the findings. Uh, all right, so let's get to the nitty gritty. When I first opened the package, I was struck by the exceptional attention to detail. A bunch of little Ziploc bags keep all the pieces organized and there's detailed instructions and illustrations to help make installation foolproof. If that's not good enough for you, there's also videos available to watch, but it's pretty straightforward. Tailfin includes a measuring device that you wrap around your fork leg. It's color coded to help select the proper bolt and rubber spacer for your fork. From there, you install the clamps loosely on the fork add the cargo or bottle cages you plan to use, and figure out the height on the fork leg you want to set it at. Then Tailfin recommends pulling off the mount and wrapping some self-fusing silicone tape on the contact points, which I did. Once that's done, slide everything back over the fork legs and the silicone tape and rotate to your desired position. Once everything's dialed into your liking, tighten down the clamps to the recommended torque of 3 newton meters and the cages to 4 newton meters, easy peasy. One thing I did notice, if you're using tailfin cargo cages, make sure to use the shorter T25 bolts that come with the SFMs and not the longer T25 bolts that come with the cargo cage for mounting. Those are too long and the rubber spacer won't sit properly and you can potentially damage the fork. I made this mistake at first, but caught it quickly. After a ton of use in multiple configurations on every type of terrain imaginable, here's what I can tell you. These don't slip or spin or fall, and I've never had a cage come loose either. I check the bolt torque from time to time, and it's all good. Are SFMs twice as strong as the competitors? I don't know, and I don't really care, but I can attest to their strength and durability in legitimate field use, and I can't believe this is achieved with only three newton meters of torque. All other competing products I've tried, and I won't mention any names, have slipped or come loose in one way or another. Hands down, SFMs have earned my confidence. Both the metal and carbon units perform the same, but the carbon definitely looks and feels sexier. After handling both of them, the metal ones are slightly clunkier and less refined. So if you've got the money to invest, I'd go with the lighter carbon version. To be clear, I still recommend hose clamps if you're more of a DIY type or on a tight budget. They won't come loose either when used properly, and they're slightly lighter and keep a lower profile but you're limited to using specific types of cages and installation and removal of the cages is nowhere near as fast and easy. With the SFM, when you don't need a cage on your fork, you can just unbolt the cage and leave the clamp installed and you barely notice it's there. The multiple mounting points on the SFM also make it appealing and it's super easy to adapt your carrying capacity for different trips. To be fair, my fork was pretty scratched up before I started using the SFM, but I haven't noticed any new aesthetic damage and the performance of the fork hasn't been hindered in any way. I can't imagine ever needing it, especially after how much I've beaten these up, but it is nice to have peace of mind with a five year warranty in case I ever have a problem. In terms of cons or negatives, especially compared to hose clamps, the main consideration is definitely the price. 40 to 70 bucks per fork leg isn't necessarily cheap. But when you consider the engineering and R&D that went into them, the price is more easily validated. As I've already stated, both the carbon and alloy versions are heavier than hose clamps and they're not as streamlined. There's more parts and pieces to keep track of, and although it hasn't happened to me, it's potentially easier to have a bolt rattle loose and fall out, so you have to think about packing spares, etc. And remember, these won't work on every fork, but I can't imagine many folks are using 38s or 40s for bikepacking. It is a bummer that you can't mount SFMs to a RockShox Judy either, but you can't win them all. With all that said, I've been very happy with the SFMs from Tailfin, and they gracefully solved the problem of carrying cargo and water on suspension forks. No, they're not cheap. Yes, they are over-engineered, and in my opinion, they're a sound investment for anyone bikepacking or bike touring with a full suspension bike, and they have a welcome spot in my personal bikepacking kit. 
I expect to own and find uses for these on many different bikes and forks for many years to come. So I want to hear from you. What solutions have you found or created for strapping stuff to your sus forks? Have any of you used SFMs? And if so, what's your takeaway? Sharing is caring, and I look forward to sifting through all of your comments and questions. Likewise, please share this video with your bikepacking peeps. Click the like button if you feel inclined. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Regardless, thanks for hanging out until the end. And until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward. Thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule. Please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, give back, pay it forward.